hello everyone we will continue with the measurement of moisture vapor transmission through fabric in last class we discussed the upright cup method where a shallow cup is filled with water and the fabric is mounted on the cup and the total assembly is kept in environmental chamber assembly is weighed periodically throughout the day and we can calculate the water vapor transmission using this formula in terms of gram per square meter per 24 hour. Now, after this the next method is which is inverted cup test method. So, inverted cup method, so normal cup method is this one where the distilled water it is partially filled in a cup and fabric specimen is actually covering the cup and water vapor is transmitted. So, through the fabric. So, this is the normal method but inverted cup method is that just after placing the fabric specimen the cup is inverted. But here the system is not that simple, here we have to use some other technique otherwise the fabric will get wet and the water will drip through the fabric specimen. So, we will not be able to measure the moisture vapor transmission. So, to do that the technique is that the hydrophobic PTFE membrane is used to seal the mouth of the cup to prevent the wetting of the specimen. So, once the fabric along with the cup is inverted, so to prevent that wetting of the fabric specimen the mouth of the cup is first covered with the PTFE membrane which is water proof, but breathable. The, then the test specimen is placed over the membrane. Now, if we see here this is the cup okay. in this cup is partially filled with water and first this cup mouth of the cup is covered with its PTFE membrane which is waterproof, but breathable it allows the moisture vapor and then the fabric specimen is placed. This arrangement is actually preventing the wetting of the fabric. Now, after this the total system is inverted. Let me draw this is inverted and this is PTFE membrane and then you have fabric sample and water after making it inverted 
water will come in this side. Here the fabric is not getting wet because the PTFE membrane is preventing the fabric okay, to be in touch with the water, but with this arrangement the water vapor will pass through the fabric and this system is used mainly for waterproof type of fabric. Okay. So, so, the cup assembly is placed in an inverted position assembly is wet periodically throughout one day as we have seen in earlier case mainly used for fabric with waterproof. Now, after that another method is that it is called desiccant inverted cup method. Now, this is almost similar to that of inverted cup method, but it has got some difference also. In inverted cup method, the cup was filled with water, but here we are not using any water in place of water, here we are using desiccant material. Now, the technique let me explain first this is a cup okay, and here some desiccant material will be there granules will be there some may be a different form may be powder form may be granule form okay. and this cup is first the mouth is covered with the waterproof, but breathable sample may be PTFE coated sample and then the fabric is placed here. After that we again use another layer of waterproof breathable specimen. Now, this inner one it is optional we may or may not use this inner layer but outer layer is must. Now, after that what we do we take say water bath which is filled with water okay, and this cup is placed in inverted condition. Now, let me draw again. So, this is the cup I am trying to draw here. Cup okay. and here it is inner portion is one layer, then we have the fabric layer. fabric layer and we have main outer layer, this is the outer layer. Now, what happens this outer layer is preventing the fabric of being wet, it is not getting wet and you have desiccation. Now, this granules desiccant granules will ensure that the relative humidity that 
it will become almost 0 percent. So, it is it is actually the cup remains dry and whatever moisture vapor enters this desiccant they will absorb and as it is placed inside liquid water. So, water vapor will get transmitted through the fabric sample and outer layer as it is a porous it will allow the moisture vapor, it will not allow the, the water molecule, but water vapor molecule is allowed and this will directly pass through the fabric specimen and mass of the this cup is measured okay. and the inner layer inner layer of this PTFE coated specimen breathable waterproof breathable it is optional. If we want that the, the desiccant material to touch the fabric so that trap it can absorb the moisture quickly. So, that we may eliminate the inner layer. Okay. So, in this picture it is showing two PTFE coated, but inner layer we can always avoid. So, this is similar to that of inverted cup method, but the only difference is that in this method the cup used in this method is partly filled with desiccant such as potassium acetate, calcium chloride, anhydrous CaSO4 like that. The drying agent this is a desiccant materials the drying agent stays in direct contact with fabric that means, if we do not use the inner PTFE coated uh, layer membrane that that means, this desiccant agent will be in direct contact with fabric which will minimize the path of water vapor that means, it will directly absorb immediately absorb at is as soon as the moisture vapor crosses the fabric layer. Okay. The inverted cup is covered by specimen and the specimen is covered by another piece of waterproof and vapor permeable membrane like PTFE that we have discussed already. The inverted cup along with the specimen is immersed into the water bath filled with distilled water with the help of specimen holder. So, specimen holder will be there that will actually help in immersing the, the total setup. The measuring cup initially is wet, so before uh, immersion we can uh, take the weight by means of balance then inverted and inserted into the specimen holder. After certain time t the measuring cup is removed and re -weight. So, as the desiccant material they absorb moisture which is transmitted through the fabric. So, the mass of the cup total assembly will change, it will be increased. So, it will be reweighed and the water vapor permeability of the specimen is then calculated by using the following equation. Okay. What is the equation? Water vapor transmission equal to W 2 minus W 1 divided by A multiplied by T. What is W 2? So, water vapor transmission is the by W V T. W 2 is the mass of cup assembly after test and W 1 is the mass of the cup assembly before test. So, difference is the total moisture vapor transmitted W 2 minus W 1 A is the area of the test fabric and T is the time. So, from there we can 
calculate the water vapor transmission rate. Okay. Next method is that it is a moisture vapor transmission cell. So, here we have two cells. Now, let me discuss this. So, here we have two cells. two cells one is bottom cell another is top cell this is bottom cell and this one is top cell bottom cell is partially filled with water and once it is actually partially filled so due to the moisture vapor here in this cell the moisture is actually saturated and with have which have higher pressure ok. So, vapor pressure is high and the fabric specimen is placed in between this is the fabric specimen ok. And top cell initially it is actually gift dry. So, dry it is totally it is uh, dry initially ideally it should be 0 percent relative humidity by some means we can actually flow dry nitrogen and to make it 0 percent. After it is being totally dry then this inlet and exit we are closing it is closed and here it is the relative humidity sensor is there and moisture is getting transmitted inside the upper cell and we can measure the change of relative humidity R h percent we can measure by the relative humidity sensor and using this R R h percent change, change of R h percent with the time, at the particular time we can measure the moisture vapor transmission. So, there are two cells, lower cell is partially filled with water and covered by fabric specimen. The upper cell is kept dry at start of the experiment by suitable arrangement. We can use various arrangements to make it totally dry. So, it is a theoretically it should be 0 percent relative, relative humidity. Moisture vapor is transmitted through the fabric sample with the time. The moisture vapor transmission rate T it is in gram per square inch per day. So, that is given by the change in relative humidity in the upper cell at a given time interval. So, using this equation we can calculate the moisture vapor transmission rate. So, this is the constant of this instrument change in relative humidity with the time interval and 1440 is the constant of the system. So, using this formula if we can calculate if you can measure the relative humidity change and with the time we can calculate the moisture vapor transmission rate. It is a simple here we are not measuring the mass indirectly we are measuring the rate of change of relative humidity. Okay. So, from this we can calculate the moisture vapor transmission rate. Now, next method is the microclimate cum moisture vapor transmission tester. So, it simulates the microclimate and then it can measure the moisture vapor transmission. Now, this is the instrument setup schematic diagram of the instrument. 
what is microclimate as we know the microclimate is the climate between our skin and the fabric. So, we would like to know what is the microclimate condition for different fabric or different environmental condition and also we can calculate the moisture vapor transmission. So, let us see the instrument setup here this is the chamber which is partially filled with water okay. and here the it is a heating box we can heat the water so that the moisture vapor is generated, but heating is controlled by thermostat. So, to maintain certain temperature. So, this temperature is important because our skin temperature we have to maintain in the mimic skin. This is the mimic skin and this skin temperature should be around 35 degree Celsius. So, to maintain this skin temperature 35 degree Celsius we have to maintain certain temperature and from our experience from our experimental result we have seen if we keep around 40 41 degree Celsius of this water temperature in that case we can maintain the skin temperature around 35 degree Celsius. So, that is controlled temperature is controlled by the thermostat and the there is a gap created here which ensures the moisture vapor will actually transmitted through the mimic skin. This is yellow color it is a mimic skin we are we have used some vapor permeable membrane here and this is the microclimate chamber and the thickness of the microclimate can be changed. Okay. It is actually 3 centimeter is maximum and we can change it to 0 where when the fabric specimen which is shown in blue color which is in when it is touching with the mimic skin that means it is in uh, the it shows the fabric is in touch with our skin and in the microclimate zone what we have placed it is a temperature sensor and humidity sensor. Here we can measure the temperature and humidity also and the from the skin the vapor is coming and the fabric will actually it will transmit the moisture vapor through the fabric and also here to simulate the actual condition actual windy condition here we can use one tunnel wind tunnel and fabric that fabric specimen through the fabric the moisture vapor will get transmitted and it will come to the wind tunnel and where the fan is used to blow the whatever moisture vapor is accumulated there and it will simulate the forced convection. Okay. And here we will try to see as we change the flow of air our moisture vapor that relative humidity of the microclimate and temperature also changes. So, here a circular portion of the fabric okay, is placed here okay, and this is the mimic skin humidity sensor is here is placed this is the actual photograph of the instrument and we can record the change of relative humidity 
and temperature with time. Okay. Now, this graph shows the microclimate humidity and surrounding humidity. If we see and this surrounding humidity and microclimate humidity is plotted with the time. We can see here the surrounding humidity is almost constant, it is not changing, but the microclimate humidity it increases gradually with the time. That means, as the the moisture vapor is transmitted through the mimic scheme, the fabric has got its some the moisture vapor transmission rate and that will prevent the free flow of moisture vapor that is why the moisture vapor pressure is increasing and relative humidity is increasing within the fabric and the skin that is the microclimate zone and this the difference this difference has to be minimum. So, we can if we know this difference we can develop fabric with higher moisture vapor transmission and at this point this point shows which is actually 16.8 minutes at that time when the fan switch is on fan is switched on the moisture in the microclimate that is relative humidity drops immediately which shows the forced convection due to the forced convection whatever relative humidity the moisture was there inside the microclimate it has been actually forcefully drawn through the fabric so which simulates the windy condition that means once we feel the sweaty or humid if the wind is blowing then we will feel little bit dry due to that the forced convection and this experiment simulates that condition. Now, we can test this is a typical curve typical curve of a particular fabric we can test wide range of fabric and we can see the drop in relative humidity. Similarly, this is the temperature of microclimate temperature it is the microclimate simulator this is the surrounding temperature which is remain which remains constant okay, before the fan is switched on, but the temperature of the microclimate increases gradually initially at very high rate, but it is increasing consistently. This is because of the increase in moisture vapor pressure and the hot relatively hot that moisture vapor comes through the mimic skin and accumulated inside the microclimate that is why it is reaching from 25 degree Celsius to gradually it is reaching 29 degree Celsius and it will keep on increasing and it will maintain the temperature close to the skin temperature. But as soon as we switched on the fan and the moisture vapor gets removed from the microclimate and microclimate temperature start dropping. So, that typically shows the behavior of microclimate and we can see the actual feel of coldness or hot feeling. So, we can simulate here and for different types of fabric 
we can simulate, we can actually predict the performance. Next technique of measurement of moisture vapor transmission is holographic bench technique. Here in this method the mass flow is measured with high accuracy using a micro weighing technique. The resistance to the water vapor transmission depends on the resistance of the air layer as well as the clothing layer and holographic bench technique separately measure the water vapor flow resistance offered by the air layer. So, it measures the water flow resistance by the air layer thus it provides the precise vapor resistance value of the textile layer. So, it separates out the moisture vapor transmission moisture vapor resistance by the clothing layer. Next technique is that sweating guarded hot plate. So, we will discuss later when we will discuss the dry heat transmission the guarded hot plate the principle of guarded hot plate we will discuss later, but at this point we will see the principle of sweating guarded hot plate. The working principle is similar to that guarded hot plate, but with little difference where we use the sweating plate. It measures the evaporative heat loss in the steady state condition. So, when the water gets evaporated and the during the evaporation it takes the heat the latent heat of evaporation that quantity of heat it measures and that heat is actually indirectly shows the moisture vapor transmission. The temperature of the guarded hot plate is kept at 35 degree Celsius because the guarded hot plate it's, it simulates the skin. Our skin temperature is around 35 degree Celsius. The water vapor resistance R E T which is expressed in terms of meter square Pascal by watt is calculated by this equation. Okay. So, basically it is the wattage required that is the heat required okay, per unit area per unit Pascal okay, per unit vapor pressure and that is the uh, flux okay, and it is reciprocal of that it is the water vapor resistance. So, R E T is equal to A multiplied by P M minus P A divided by H minus delta H minus R E T 0, where A is the area of the test specimen and this is these are the vapor pressure difference. P m is the saturation water vapor pressure at the surface of the measuring unit and P a is the vapor pressure of the ambient condition. Okay. So, it is the water vapor pressure of the air in the test chamber. So, ambient vapor pressure. So, P m minus P a is the difference in vapor pressure. So, which is actually the driving force the H is the is the amount of heat supplied to the measuring unit to keep the guarded hot plate 35 degree Celsius. Okay. So, to keep that plate at the constant temperature we need to supply extra heat 
uh, that is h okay and a is the area and delta h c is the correction factor of the instrument and r e t w is the apparatus constant. So, this is the apparatus constant which is nothing but the bare plate resistance. So, this uh, this is the resistance with the fabric specimen, this is the resistance with the bare plate. If we actually subtract the bare plate, so this will give us the actual vapor resistance of the fabric. Okay. So, this gives in the terms of wattage P m minus P a it is a Pascal vapor pressure and this is square meter, square meter Pascal per watt. So, this is the R e t 0 this its unit is again square meter Pascal per watt. So, distilled water level in the dosing device is adjusted 1 millimeter below the test plate. So, otherwise the test plate will be flooded. Okay. The porous membrane is covered over the plate assembly. So, the test plate which is actually the sintered one. So, 1 millimeter below will keep the water level and then porous plate is covered with the another porous membrane which will actually not allow the water to transmit through, but it will allow the moisture vapor transmission. So, water droplet coming out of the plate should be just enough to keep the porous membrane with moisture. So, the porous plate the sintered plate through that water will come and then this porous plate is covered with the porous membrane. Okay. Now, let me draw this one. This is the porous plate which is test plate. Water level is kept here. So, that water comes on the upper side. Okay, this is the water. Now, this is actually covered with this is the porous membrane which will not allow the water to pass through, but would allow the moisture vapor. And then we can use the fabric specimen, here we can use the fabric specimen and through which we can measure the moisture vapor transmission. And here the heat required to keep the plate temperature at 35 degree Celsius we measure that is the H value. So, the porous membrane is covered over the plate assembly water droplet coming out of the plate should be just enough to keep the porous membrane with moisture. The resistance to water vapor that is evaporative resistance is given by the following equation. So, this is the water vapor resistance as we have seen earlier it is a similar here P s minus P a. So, where R e t is the evaporative resistance of the fabric provided by the liquid barrier along the air layer. Okay. P s is the saturated vapor pressure at the skin temperature. Okay. P a is the ambient vapor pressure, this is ambient vapor pressure 
okay, at ambient temperature P A R T this is the R T is the thermal resistance it is the dry resistance okay, dry thermal resistance. So, this one will give you the value which is for dry thermal resistance. So, therefore, T S minus T A by R T is the dry heat loss this is the dry heat loss and this one is the total heat loss. Total heat loss is Q by A it is a total heat loss and if we subtract the dry heat loss then we will get the heat loss due to the moisture vapor evaporation. So, actually we are getting the moisture vapor evaporation here per that is the per unit moisture vapor pressure difference. The intrinsic evaporative resistance is given by R E T minus equal to R E R E F that is the intrinsic evaporative resistance of the fabric R E F equal to R E T minus R E T 0. This is the total evaporative resistance including the, the heat required for the instrument actually. So, R E T 0 is the bare plate evaporative resistance. So, R E T 0 is the bare plate resistance. So, for the total sample without the fabric there will be some resistance. So, that if we can subtract we will get actual resistance required by the fabric. So, permeability index is the ratio it is given by that R C T by R E T okay, where R C T and R E T are dry and evaporative thermal resistance respectively. So, this permeability index it is actually it is a relationship between the dry thermal resistance and the wet thermal resistance. So, that is the ratio and K is the conduct constant which is for this instrument it is 60.6515 okay. that is the constant of this uh, instrument. So, here we can measure the intrinsic evaporative resistance and also permeability index of fabric. Another method of measurement of uh, moisture vapor transmission which is perma test and this follows the standard ISO standard 110092 and this method it is a very fast response method. So, this is a fast response measuring instrument it works on the principle of heat flux sensing that is measuring the evaporative heat resistance the temperature of the measuring head is maintained at 35 degree Celsius. So, again here we measure the measuring head temperature 35 degree Celsius which is equal to our skin temperature from where the supplied water gets evaporated. So, water will be supplied like our skin the water is supplied and from the skin as the water is getting evaporated here the plate simulates the skin which is actually filled with water and that temperature is maintained 35 degree Celsius. The heat supplied to maintain the temperature of the measuring head with and without fabric mouth mountain uh, mounted on the plate is measured so, that means with and without fabric we are measuring the heat supplied okay relative water vapor permeability 
per in percentage is expressed in terms of heat lost when the fabric is placed on the measuring head then divided by heat lost from the bare plate head multiplied by 100. That means, if we cover the fabric cover the plate with the fabric the heat loss will be less. Now, suppose this is a plate ok, plate where water is present. Now, when we are heating and it is getting it is taking heat of H 1 for evaporation. So, when there is no restriction it will evaporate more and more moisture ok and that is why it will take heat H 1. Now, in second case when there is a water is there and when it is covered with fabric specimen the fabric specimen will actually restrict free movement of the water and in that case it will take the heat H 2. So, heat is taken just to maintain the temperature 35 degree Celsius during the evaporation during evaporation it is taking latent heat and the temperature will try to drop to maintain that temperature it will draw extra heat that is H 1. So, when it is covered with fabric specimen, so the heat drawn will be less. So, H 2 will be less than H 1. So, this ratio will show the basically it the ratio of H 2 and H 1 will show the permeability characteristics. How much the fabric specimen is preventing the free flow free evaporation of liquid. So, heat loss when the fabric is placed on the measuring head it is less than the heat loss through the bare plate ok. So, because be, during bare plate the more amount of the water will be evaporated. So, that is why the ratio is the relative water vapor permeability and this is the equipment here we can see in this equipment this one is the wire mesh it is shown in the top view it is wire mesh is there on the wire mesh we are placing the fabric this is the fabric specimen it is placed. Now, at the bottom here it is a copper plate and on the, on the copper plate it is a water film is produced. So, water film is actually created on the copper plate and copper plate this plate is heated. So, once the plate is heated suppose this is the wire mesh and if we see if we draw the wire mesh top view of the wire mesh this is the wire mesh. Now, on the wire mesh it is a total open open mesh ok. Now, without any fabric suppose we are this is the copper plate copper plate is connected with the heater. takes it is connected with the heater and there is a water film water film is created. Now, once the heater is switched on due to the heat to maintain the temperature of 35 degree Celsius there will be 
evaporation of the water and which will freely pass through the wear mesh and it will draw this heat say H 1 it will draw heat H 1. Now, after that when we place the fabric specimen here this fabric specimen will block the free flow of the vapor depending on the vapor permeability. Initially when it is a wear mesh the there is no restriction water will water vapor will pass through freely, but once we are placing the fabric over this wash this mesh it will prevent the free flow. So, ideally if we see the fabric is totally it is blocked there is no water vapor transmission it is water vapor transmission is totally say 0 what will happen it will not take the latent heat because moisture vapor transmission will not be there. So, the moisture vapor pressure will be high. So, it will draw less heat okay. and once the fabric if the fabric is open then it will try to take more and more heat. So, as the fabric becomes more and more open the heat drawn by the plate will be close to say H 2 will be close to H 1. So, this ratio we can get uh, to calculate the moisture vapor transmission using the Parma test and here we can control the air flow at different air flow rate we can measure the moisture vapor transmission. So, the instrument works under the principle of heat flux sensing it sense the heat flux the temperature of the measuring head is maintained in isothermal condition at 35 degree Celsius. When water evaporates from the measuring head the heat loss from it is measured indirectly by heat sensor. Heat loss by bare plate and covered with fabric both are taken and this the ratio of this two heat is actually relative water vapor permeability. P W V water vapor percent is given by U S which is the heat loss from the measuring head with fabric and U 0 heat loss from the measuring head without fabric. What does it mean? if u s is equal to u 0 means u 0 will be maximum and u s if the fabric is very open it is to completely open fabric then u s will be close to u 0 that means it will tend to 1 and water vapor permeability will be close to 100 percent. And if it is blocking totally it is blocking that means there will not be any heat loss there theoretically there will not be any heat loss because the fabric is blocking the moisture vapor to be transmitted. So, the plate temperature will not drop and it will not 
draw extra heat that u 0 will be 0 that means, the moisture vapor permeability will be 0. So, it is actual range is from 0 to 100 percent. So, water vapor resistance can also be measured in this instrument. So, that is that P W S A T which is partial water vapor pressure in saturated air this is saturated air and this is the laboratory air it is ambient air. So, this partial vapor pressure ratio that is a pressure is the difference so, 1 by S u 0 minus 1 by S u s. So, using this formula we can calculate the water vapor resistance okay. and C is the constant determined the calibration procedure here and because this vapor pressure is converted in terms of relative humidity okay, this is the actual humidity it is 100 because this is the saturated air and S is the sensitivity of the instrument this is again constant. So, using this formula we can calculate the water vapor resistance. So, we have actually come at the end of the moisture vapor, moisture in the form of liquid and in the form of vapor. Now, we will stop here, we will discuss in the next class the thermal characteristics, the measurement of thermal transmission through the textile material through the functional textiles and we will measure in two aspects one is a normal condition another is we will see in the extreme condition extreme means in extreme cold and extreme heat condition may be in a flame or may be in radiant heat condition all this we will discuss in the next class. Till then, thank you.